Let's jump into phonics. So before we fully go into phonics, let's talk about where we came from and where we are now. So here's our uh, learning spectrum of reading, and we've already discussed phonemic awareness and concepts, concepts of print. We already went from phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, which is just the sounds, to the idea that these scribbles, these markings on the paper and in books mean something, which is concepts of print. And now the child is ready to learn how to read, how to decode. So phon phonics is that letter to sound relationship that determines pronunciation. I'm gonna say that one more time. It's that letter to sound relationship or letter to sound correspondence to determine pronunciation. This does not mean you can get meaning from it. That is the next stage of um, reading and phonics, which is called morphemic awareness. We are looking at the sound and the letters, we're learning how to pronounce them, but we still cannot get meaning from it. I also wanna introduce the word decoding, and this is a really strong word to not only know, just for the knowledge of teaching kids how to read, but when to use it in order to write the, your essays. Decoding is the ability to apply the knowledge of letter-sound relationships and pattern, letter patterns to correctly pronounce um, written word. So when you're writing your essay and it tells you to look at how a child is pronouncing this word, you can say how this child is decoding the words. Are they able to decode um, multisyllabic words? Or are they able to decode um, blend uh, digraphs or vowel teams, right? Decoding is just do they have the ability to do that or not? And whenever you're writing the essay, and we'll look, talk a little bit more about that when we get to the essay writing portion of the workshop, we have to use all this tech, technical language. You can't just write, well, the kid doesn't know how to read this and this and that. No, you have to actually show some understanding as, and apply some of this technical language to your um, essay. That's why we're going over the vocabulary and making sure that you truly understand and have the words to write them. All right, so let's jump right in. This is the spectrum. <coughs> uh, sorry, this is the continuum. Just like in phonological logical I give you a continuum. I also give you a continuum in phonics, from the easiest skill to teach to the harder skill, hardest skill to teach. And here we have six different skills within the simple, like the first part of phonics that a child must be able to master before they can go on to the next thing. So the grade levels here on the side are a guide. Some kids are more advanced than the other. That's why you have some kids when you're doing some reading testing. Um, in our school, we know it is as step testing that are at a more advanced level. But still, this is within the grade level that they need to master this skill. One way I recognize, I memorize these stages are the idea that consonants are easier to teach than vowels. So just to quickly review, a consonant are all the letters in the alphabet that are not A, E, I, O, U, because A, E, I, O, U are all vowels, right? So we're, we're talking about the P and the L, the M and the B, and then the vowels being the A, E, I, O, U's. And if you think about the way our language is put together, our consonants have much less rules, are easier to identify than our vowels. Our vowels have tons of rules. They're short vowels, long vowels, vowels that change because there's another vowel. It, vowels, when combined, change again. Vowels are so complex within our language. So you want to think about as easy. Consonant is easier to learn and teach than vowels. Then there are consonant rules, vowel rules, and then we're just rules that we have to learn in the English language. So let's physically see how that looks like. Consonant, then you're going to go to vowel, then you're going to go to like a consonant rule, vowel rule, and just an English language rule that only applies to our language. All right, so level one, we have sound to letter recognition of simple consonants and vowels. So you want to go from consonant to vowel, right? Consonants are always the easiest skill to teach first. There are 44 sounds in our language, but there's only 26 letters in our alphabet. And so you're going to have to teach these to the kids, and the kids are going to have to understand the different combinations of them. But ideally, this is the way you begin to teach a child how to read words. 
So I'm going to go ahead and simulate as if there were a child in front of me, and you're going to see how I go through this. So we're going to introduce the sound, we're going to show the letter in print, and then we're going to name the letter. Hi, friend. Here I'm showing you a picture. What is this picture of? Oh, it's an apple. Great. Let's tap out and sound out. Uh, let's tap out our words. Let's sound out the diff what sounds do we hear in the word. Here we go. Up on the shoulder, remember that activity where I had told you about tapping out and phonemic awareness, hand extended, tapping out each of those individual phonemes. So here we go. A -p -l, starting up at your shoulder. A is the shoulder. P middle. Um, wrist. L. A -p -l. Friends, what is the middle sound of apple? Well, here is a, pho a phonemic awareness skill that the child now needs to isolate that middle sound. So, a ah is the first one, p, p, p is the middle one, l is the last one. Well, Miss P is that middle sound. Great. P is the middle sound. When we hear the sound p, it is represented by this letter. And this letter is the letter P. Great. P. The P sound is made by the letter P. You would do the same thing with A. What is the beginning sound? A. A is represented with the letter A. And this is the way we write a letter A, right? So again, I'm not expecting the child to learn how to s spell apple, that there's a double P, but I want them to know that the sound P is made by the letter P, and it looks like this. So now let's go to the second. So we went from a consonant, now we're going to go to vowel, right? And so we already learned simple vowels, but now we need to put these consonant and these vowels together to make words that make sense. Go, so going from just sounds, a Ah, eh, to now blending them to make words that actually make sense in our language. So the first one, you have a child say, uh, you have a, a child pronounce or decode ah, t. Great, we said at, let's blend together, makes at. Great, at. Now let's add a letter to the beginning of that word, that means we add a sound. K, a, t. Well, remember, we've already taught the child that the C makes the k sound. Oh, so, k, a, t makes cat. Great, we just blended that word together. So right here we see where it says CVC at CV words and CVC words. Well, when we're talking about V and Cs, we're talking about Vs are vowels, C are consonant. Usually in the world of education, you will hear the term a lot of CV words and CV, VC words and CVC words. They're referring to these simple type of words that usually have this pattern. So words like hat, bat, and cat are all words that have this CVC pattern. The it's, right? The I-T's, it, hit, bit, mit, ought. Ought is not a word, but hot, caught. And then we have op. And then we can switch around these combinations of consonant, vowel, consonant that usually have a base in a vowel consonant word, right? So we went from the first simplest level of just teaching the individual sound that goes with the letter to now teaching combinations of these, knowing that there's always a vowel inside of a word. I know that when I was little, I was taught that every single word in the, in the English language has at least one vowel. Well, it's this idea that you're beginning to construct. Now we're going to level three. So we went from consonants, got it. Vowel, got it. Now we're going to go back to consonant. And remember, anything consonants is easier to teach than anything vowels. So the next level of consonants you need to teach are these digraphs and these diphthongs, these blends, right? But I don't want you to get caught up in the what are diphthongs, what are digraphs. What I need you to know is that the level three are the combinations. What happens when I put two consonants together? 
you know, the, the sound changes, the sound blends. We do not pronounce SH as sh or k or k or th or th. No, the combination of two consonants have one sound. And so an example of that would be these, the wa, ch, sh, th, th. Those are two consonants usually that have that H that make one sound. So let's see how this goes. We went from at to k, at to ch, at. Every time we add a new phonics rule, the word changes, the meaning changes. So you would not have this child read this k, at. You just have to teach that ch makes the ch sound. Another example of a consonant blend, this is when your mouth moves, are these complements. This, this is two consonants put together make one sound. So we do not pronounce the word black as black. <laughs> My mouth just like tore up just saying that, right? We teach that b, b is made of, uh, b, l is pronounced b, and c, k is pronounced k. And then where we put it together, it's black. Let's see how it looks like with our little pattern of words here that we've been using since the beginning. So we have a, t, at. Then we have ch. At chat. Great. Now we're going to do k at clat. So, but clat is not a word, but that's fine because if they're able to decode each of these portions, this is how you prove that even though this is a nonsense word, they still know the rule that CL is cl at clat. And then you make it into a, a word that they can um, distinguish as an English word. Cl -a -p. Clap. Great, right, friends. We can clap. This is the way we say the word, we read the word clap, say the word clap, and spell the word clap, right? Remember, all this is now including spelling. Um, because we are doing now letter to sound correspondence along with letter sound rules. So let's go back and think about the simplest form that you would teach a kindergarten. Imagine you have a five year old in front of you. You are teaching them first letter and sound correspondence, how to ident how to read the letter A, write the letter A, find the letter A, right? How to read the letter P, say the letter P, find the little P, the letter P, write the letter P. Hmm. When we see the letter C and H together, it's now ch, 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 and you have them cute, those cute little songs and activities that I love watching kindergarten teachers do with the young kids. And now when you see C and L, it makes the k sound, or C and K makes the k sound. We also have combinations of ing, ong, or l, which is double L, that also make one specific sound. At a more, more advanced level, we have three-level blends, which STR is a three-level blend. Nonetheless, it makes one sound, str, str, not st, r, str, strange. All right, so when we, we went over the first one, which is the simple consonant, right, to teach, because consonants are easier to teach than vowels. Then we go into vowels and blending in those consonant and vowels to make simple BC and CVC words. Then we went back to consonant and those digraph and those blends. And now we're gonna go into the rules. And the simplest, there are three very simple rules, two of, the, two of those rules that are super easy to recognize. And you gotta think about English rules are just these rules that just exist in our language and kids just have to learn, right? And the two of the, Two, the first two rules are the simplest rules. The first two are the silent E and then the controlled R. And then the next rules are words that you just have to learn just because. <laughs> 
it perplexed me how you just have to learn that. Like I am completely 100% bilingual. I grew up with two languages, English and Spanish. I do not remember a time in my life where I have not spoken both languages. And the English ha language has so many rules compared to the Spanish language just based on these are the things you need to learn. All right. So now let's go into the two rules. And we know that the rule of the silent E, right? The E changes the way we say the first vowel. So it is no longer at, it, first we say at, mat, and then it's no longer mat, the word is mate. This sing, this E, this silent E changes the way we say the A. Every time we add a new phonics rule or new phonics level, the word changes, which changes the meaning of the word. Now we have the bossy R. The bossy R tells that vowel to change its name also. So we're going from at, at, to k, at, cat, to cards. K, R, t, cart. This A, R makes the R sound. So we went from at to at, and now we are k art. Again, let's think about it one more time. And I'm going to continue going because this is the way I it helped me memorize. We go consonant, vowel, consonant, rule. Uh, so consonant, simple consonants to learn, and simple letters with how you say them, how you write them. So now combining them with vowels to make VC words. So at and cat. Now we are going to throw in what happens when I add two consonants together, like clap or chat. And then now what happens when we throw an E in the mix and an R in the mix, it changes. The other type of rule we need to teach children, this is usually done with flashcards, are these weird rules. We cannot pronounce these names as blend, uh, these sounds, uh, these letters and sounds as blends. We cannot pronounce these in any other way than just to know them. Like the silent K is just no, or GH, or RW. Um, it's just words, the ways we pronounce combination of words, they're called unusual consonant pairs. We just have to learn these, and it's usually through flashcards. There's just no way around it. If you take your role as an educator to the next level and become a reading specialist, then they'll probably go a little bit into the technicalities of why this happened as our language changed from um, the base of Latin to this one. But at the end of the day, for children, they just need to learn it. You just need to teach it, usually through memorization. All right, so we went consonant, vowel. Consonant, remember the combination of consonant to rules. And now we're going to go into the complicated part of what happens, miss, if we put two vowels together? Do we pronounce vo both vowels the same? So this is called vowel teams. And vowel teams is when you put two vowels together and it changes. Again, we have diphthongs and digraphs. Do not get hung up on the definition of digra digraphs and diphthongs. All you need to know is digraph and diphthongs means when we put two letters together that make one sound. In digraphs, your mouth does not move. In diphthongs, your mouth does move. So when I hear diphthong or digraph, I just know we're talking a combination of letters that make one sound. Whether they move or not, that is more for a speech pathologist or I mean, it's important for us teachers to know, but don't get hung up on that for the test. They don't go that deep into it. You can show your knowledge about diphthongs and digraphs by using that technical language inside your essay writing, but it is not necessary. You, but you do need to know at what level we teach this. So let's see how this goes with our little continuum that we've been doing with our sample words. We have the word at, 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 k, at. Cat, ch, at, chat. And now when we throw in a vowel team, ch, eat, cheat. The EA sound is equal to 
E. So when we see E A, we say E. When we see E E, we say another. When we see I E, we say another sound. We just need to teach these sounds to our children, right? You're not going to have a child look, uh, pronounce the word look or decode the word look as look all lock. Like, that doesn't make sense. I can't even say it. We know it's look, feel. It's not f l, it's feel because that double E is the E sound. And then at the very last level and the most complex level in this phonics continuum are multisyllabic words. And we're sticking to about two syllable words that are closed consonant, right? It's easy for the child to distinguish when that consonant begins and when that consonant ends. So you have this child say the word dispute, clap out the word dispute, and then you have them identify what sound that first syllable ends with and what letter makes that sound. So this is what it looks like in action. Hi, friend. I'm going to say a word. We're going to break it down into syllables. Ready? The word is dispute. And you have the child sound that, uh, say the word back to you, dispute. Now let's clap it out. Dispute. Great dispute if you want them to tap it out it starts up on the shoulder D this is the top pew is the middle dispute so friend let's just listen to that beginning sound what sound does it end with this mm, miss the sound is s. what word makes the s sound s makes the s sound so when you are showing the word dispute you can have the child split the word dispute, and this one has the silent E rule in it. So this is actually really good because this is where a child is starting to learn chunking. And chunking is when they take parts of the word, chunk them together, and therefore decode it in parts. They can decode this first, d, i, s, dis, p. Oh, it has a silent E. <coughs> this is going to change its name. Dispute. 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 Great. The word is dispute. Let's go to this word, chatter. Um, this one's a little bit more difficult to teach because you have to teach that the syllable ends with a T, but we can still clap it out and figure out where the sound ends of the first syllable. So chatter. Chat. Her. Chat. T -t -t. Great. Oh, miss, but there's two T's. That's okay. We split the T in half. We separate them. So here's our first rule. Let's chunk. How do we pronounce this first part? Ch. Great, friend. You knew that was one sound. Ch. A. T. Chat. T. Er. Chatter, chatter. Your mouth is going to automatically want to say chatter. It's very difficult to say chatter, chat. When you put it together and you continue to blend, you figure out it is chatter. Great. You just decoded that word. This is a perfect, perfect example of decoding. If you have a child that is saying k -t -er, ear, this child is having difficulty first of all, finding um, the syllables and just identifying basic consonant blend rules or controlled R rules. Remember how I'm looking at that, how I'm uh, breaking that apart because you're going to have to use these skills during your word analysis essay. So once again, here is our continuum. Remember, consonants are easier to teach than vowels, and we go from teaching individual consonants to vowels and then how to put them together. Then we go back to the consonant rules, what happens when I put a consonant and a vowel together. Then those other rules of the English language, like the controlled R, the silent E, and all the other combinations that really have no logic to it, but it's just things that we need to learn. And then finally, those multisyllabic words. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our questions. And, and what we're going to do is, just like I've done in the other ones, we're going to go ahead and put our levels in, right? So we have our one, two, 
three, four, five, six. These are a little harder to learn, but if you know the first one and the last one, you could probably fill in the rest. So here we're gonna do multisyllabic words. Remember that we're st sticking to usually two and three uh, syllable words and it's easier for the child to chunk. Our very first level in phonics is letter sound correspondence when it comes to consonants. And then letter sound correspondence when it comes to vowels and you're blending all that together. And then we're gonna be doing the, the, the blends for consonants, right? And all that entitles that. And then here we have the rules of the English language and the rules are the E, the R, and the different ones. So I like to know them as the weird words. And then we're gonna go into the blends that are vowels. I, there's no other way for me to tell you how to remember this. It's just something that you just have to remember, go over and over and over again, or at least know that it's easier to teach um, consonants than it is to teach vowels. Like, and if you hear this video several times and practice the skills, you will understand how you teach this, in what order you teach this. All right, so let's go ahead and break down our question based on our little rules right here for phonics. A teacher can most effectively support a First grade reading development of rapid automatically word rec automatic word recognition by first teaching. All right. The reason why I underlined this because there's several clues I have in here. First grade development. I know there are many instructors that do foundations reading workshop that say you do not have to worry about the rule, uh, the, the grade. Actually, you do have to worry about the grade because you need to know where a kid needs to be, what they should master at what grade. It's not 100%, but it is a good guideline. So automatic word recognition is when a child can just see the word and say the word. Either they learn it through... Um, memorization of sight words or they just read it so many times they already know i already know how to spell the word cat i know what the word cat is i've seen the word cat thank you i know what cat is right i no longer have to decode that word i can automatically recognize that word so let's think about what is the first thing a teacher can do to help a child automatically recognize words apply consistent phonics generalization to common words so phonics generalizations are rules. That's another way of saying rules. So this is telling us to apply rules to common words. Use context clues for meaning. So this right here should be an alert to you. They love to do this on the test. I've seen all the time, all the samples of every test that I have, they like throwing either too much of a high level skill or too low of a skill into what they're asking for. Context clues and meanings for clues is too high of a level. I do not expect a first grader, a five or six year old to read a whole sentence and tell me what that word means based on the sentence. That's a skill that you actually learn in third grade and above. That's a skill that as an adult I use when I can't decode a word, right? I just, okay, oh, oh that's what that word is, got it, great, right? I do not expect a five to six year old child to do this. So that's two of a high level. Identify the constituent parts of a multisyllabic word. So I don't really know what this is, but I know I can identify the parts of a multisyllabic word and the parts of a multisyllabic word are level six. We're gonna X out B just because it's too high. Look up unfamiliar words in the dictionary. I'm gonna look up unfamiliar words in the dictionary. So you're expecting a five to six year old to look up unfamiliar words. That is too high, that can be easily deleted. So now we're looking at A and C. And within our spectrum, A is easier or earlier in the continuum to teach than multisyllabic words. So there it is. A, automatic or rapid recognition of, er, of words um, without conscious attention to the decoding process. Research, research indicates that uh, um, accurate decoding skills are a prerequisite to the development of readiness to benefit from instruction and automatic word recognition. Basically, if you can look at a word, recognize its rules, apply those rules to other unknown words, it's easier for you to decode the word. 
All right, let's go to question number 25. A second grade teacher, great. Here's a second grade teacher. So now the skill is a tiny bit harder. Um, I can do more complex activities. A second grade teacher uh, pairs students who are reading at approximately the same independent reading level. We will lear le later learn during reading comprehension what is independent frustration level and learning level of reading. So these kids are independent reading. That means they can pretty much read by themselves with a partner reading activity. During the activity, the two partners sit side by side and take turns reading words out loud from a shared text. Over a period of several days, the partner reads a large number of independent level text together. This activity is best designed to promote. So let's see what this is promoting. And they love doing this where they give you a lot of words and of a lot of explanations. You just have to pull out the main idea. You have a second grade, second grade kids. They're sitting by side by side. They're reading books they can read by themselves. They read a large number of independently, uh, independent level words. So their word load is intensified and they continuously practice. If they're practicing this over and over and over and they're reading it to each other, think about the exposure. Not only are they hearing the word, they're seeing the word and they have to identify the word if they're reading. This activity is best designed to promote, let's see, the reading rate and automicity. So we're not necessarily at reading rate right now, but the automatic recognition of words, maybe, right? Because the quicker we have a kid read the word, the quicker the, ki the kid could read, the quicker we're going to go from decoding up to comprehension. Awareness of key aspects of prosthetic reading. Okay. What does that mean exactly? I am not sure. Um, I'm going to skip that one because I didn't learn this vocabulary word. And so what does this have to do with anything, right? And, and, and I'm doing that and I'm not breaking down what this means. I'm doing it on purpose because you will sometimes have questions. I'm like, I have no idea what that answer means. But let's just kind of skip that one and go to the other ones. See if something clicks and connects. Development of comprehens comprehension skills and strategy. So first of all, this kid is in second grade. Are you actually expecting a second grader to comprehend what they're reading? Remember when we went to the continuum? Yes, we can ask basic questions to a child. Yes, if you're doing testing for guided reading, you're ask, asking a certain level of comprehension questions. But the reality is, is that you are not expecting a child to fully comprehend what they're reading until they get to the third grade. So this is actually too high of a level. Awareness of new phonics elements. This word right here is what brings out this whole answer to me. If they're at independent reading level, why would I show them new phonics elements that I have never taught them? Right? I've never taught them this. So why would you be allowing them to read independently if you haven't taught, taught them how to decode it? How are you going to go from words of cat, sat, in box to cheat me and he without actually teaching that vowel team or that um consonant blend right these are independent. This right here would be unfair to the child. So this is wrong. This is wrong. And now we're down to this one. Well, the whole goal, especially to read it over and over again, is to get that automatic recognition. So whether I knew what prosthetic reading is, I know that I'm working on automatic reading so that that child's reading rate can go up. So the answer is A, yes. Research has shown that rereading the same text several times builds comprehension and improves reading rate and automicity with respects to the given text. The reason why it helps with comprehension is because I am no longer trying to figure out what that word is. I'm no longer trying to decode. I already know what the word. I can say the word now. I can hear the whole story together when I say it. 
All right, this is a really good one. These, the next two are really good ones because this is going to help you figure out, especially when you go into the word analysis um, essay, like figure out what's going on. Here we go. According to the basic principles of research-based systematic phonics instruction, so that, that, that continuum is that systematic phonics instruction, which of the following common English letter combinations would it be the most appropriate for a first grade teacher to introduce? All right, so letter combinations. I'm going to go ahead and skip level one and two because I know that level one and two have to do with just letter sound correspondences of vowels, of consonant and vowels, right? So I'm going to skip level ones and two. And my combination letters are going to be the consonant blends, and those are the ones that are the ch. Bl, those are my consonant blends, right? And that's a, at level three. Then I know that my level four are all the weird rules. And then my level five is the vowel teams. So by me knowing this continuum, I know that I'm centering whether it's vowel teams or consonant blends those are the most popular combination of English letters, okay? Number six, of course, is multisyllables. So we're going to live in a world of three and five. So before I even start, I'm going to put them in the categories. So IR is a rules. Remember, inside rules, we have the control E, uh, the silent E, the R, and the weird words. So this is our uh, rules. KN is the weird word, the weird word stuff that we just need to know. Like, how do you teach a K and an N? A TH goes under the consonant blends. So that's a level three. So if you want to go ahead and put the numbers on, rules is four. Um, IR, I mean, control R is four. Rules is four. Uh, the consonant blends is three, and the OI is the vowel teams. Vowel teams is five. I'm looking for the first skill to introduce, and if we put the numbers down, or if you know you're continuing what goes first, we know that the very first thing that you should be teaching is those consonant blends. Consonants are easier to teach than vowels and easier to teach than the R rule, the weird word rule, or the vowel teams. So our answer is C, absolutely. In research-based systematic phonics instruction, phonics elements are introducing according to the utility of the beginner reader, and therefore according to their frequency and the use of words appearing in the primary language. All right, here's another one. This is a really good one. I selected this one because this can also come up on your um, word analysis where you're gonna see a group of words that the kid is reading and you need to figure out what is the kid doing? What mistake are they doing? So here's a second grade teacher administrates a spelling inventory periodically to help assess students' phonic knowledge. The, fo the following show one student's performance on vocabulary test at the beginning of the school year and several months later. So let's go word for word because in order to do this successfully we have to go word for word and we need to know our rules. So right here on the side I'm going to write I know in phonics there's one, two, three, four, five, six. At the very bottom we have multi-syllables. At the very top, we have letter sounds of consonants, and then we have letter sounds of vowels and how we put them together to make sounds. And then three are your consonant blends. When I put two consonants together, then we have all our rules, and our rules are the E, the R, and the weird word. That's how I like to know it as the weird word. It's just weird. And then at the bottom, we have vowel teams for number five. Okay? That's how I break it down. I put that on my side so that now my ability, my, I don't have to recall them. I already did, I already recalled them in order. Now I can pull them out.
So we have the word set, at, set. Great. If I really want to get down to it, this is letter sound correspondence, level one. Great. R. Hmm. And we have ST. The kid was able to pronounce this part of the word right, which is the consonant bled, but was not able to pronounce a controlled R rule. So this is a level four rule. Now we have drive, the student said drip. They are missing that level four rule, which is the E rule. Peach. Well, we have two things here. We have the CH and the E. And so the kid right here was unable to pronounce or spell correctly. They can pronounce it, but they can't spell the E rule. And that EA rule is a vowel team rule. So it's a level five vowel team rule or concept. Then we have turn and they say tarn. So they can pronounce the T, they can pronounce the R, and they are having difficult with that controlled R rule and controlled R rule is no, known as four. Then we have oin. Oin is where our error is and oin is a vowel team. And that is at level five. So that was the first time they did the spelling test. Let's see what happened a few months later. Well, they have set right, Right here where they made the error for the AR, they got that right, remember? Then they said drive, great, they have drive right. They also made improvement in that E rule. So they improved in the E rule, they improved in the ER rule. Now we have peach and they again said peach wrong and then added an E at the end, a silent E. I don't know what that's about. But I know that right here, this is, has to do with a vowel team and something, some confusion about the silent E. Then we have turn, great, that's a controlled R rule. And then we have join, and again, they said this wrong, not identifying the vowel team, okay? So, so far, I see that they have missed, they have done better in spelling of some words. They have still gotten two words spelled wrong, but wherever they did spell correctly was advanced in the, uh, they advanced in the recognition of that rule. So let's go ahead and see what the question is asking us to do. So notice how I broke that down. This is, this is just real basic word analysis. Being able to figure out what was the child's error and where in our continuum does that error lie. The student's performance on the second administrator, administration of the spelling inventory indicates that the student made the most improvements in which of the following areas. Well, initial and final consonants. So initial and final consonants was level one, letter sound correspondence, great. Short vowel and diphthongs. So diphthongs are those blends, right? Do we have any blends here? Well, we have a blend here. Great. So diphthongs, we're gonna call, we're gonna put them down as CB blends. Oh, sorry. Okay. Then digraphs and blends are another type of consonant blends, maybe even vowel teams. And remember, I don't want you to get hung up on diphthongs and digraphs. What you need to know is dipton and digraph means what happens when I put two letters together that make one sound. Then long and R controlled vowels. R controlled vowels. And R controlled vowels are rules at level four. So right here, this really complicated one, this child actually made more improvement on R. They didn't make any improvement on vowel control, no improvement on vowel teams or vowel um, combinations. They absolutely made no, no, no improvement on that. But they did make improvement on these words with the control R. They didn't need to make any improvements on initial sounds, letter sound correspondence because they already knew how to read those. So the most improvement is for D, the controlled R. That was a really complex one to break apart. But if you know the continuum and you know how to 
see where the error is in the child's spelling or decoding, then you can pull out the answer. And the answer is definitely D. The letter patterns of improvement across assessments suggest that the student has learned two conventional spending patterns. First, the AR and then the UR, which is that controlled R. So once again, this is the phonics continuum. It is easier to teach consonants than to teach vowels. So we always want to go from consonant to vowel, to weir weird rules, to vowel teams, to then multisyllabic words.